Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two or more player game, Venn, designed by Sean Fletcher and published by the op who helps sponsor this video. If you've never heard of one, a Venn diagram is a visual way to show how things relate to each other. For example, an apple is a red fruit. A roller skate is a shoe with wheels. These are not similar objects, so if you were organizing them, you'd probably put them in separate boxes, or in this case, circles. But where those circles overlap, that's where you put the objects that share similarities with both, like a red wagon. It's got the color of the apple and the wheels of the roller skates. Here, you'll be creating Venn diagrams so your team can guess the meanings of the clues you're trying to give them. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, find the double-sided word cards and give them a good shuffle, setting them with either side face up in the middle of the play area. Then find the number cards, which have this back, and shuffle them into a face-down deck nearby as well. Then can either be played cooperatively or competitively, and we'll start by learning the competitive rules. In this version of the game, you'll need to have at least four players, and you now divide everyone into two teams as evenly as possible. Then set the scoreboard in the center of the table, assigning each of the teams one of these scoring markers. Also, give each team three of these Venn circles arranged to look like this. Lastly, shuffle these double-sided art cards and then give roughly one-third to each of the teams, putting the rest within easy reach. And that's the setup. In Venn, each team will have one player who has three words they must lead their team to guess by placing pictured clues within the Venn circles they have in front of themselves. The faster they can get their team to correctly guess their secret words, the more points their team can score. And the team that scores the most points by the end of the game wins. The game is played over a series of rounds, and at the start of a round, draw four of these word cards from the deck and arrange them randomly using either of their sides so that a word lines up with each of the numbers showing along the scoreboard track. Each team now picks one player from their team to be the clue giver for the round, and then both clue givers now draw a number card from the top of this deck. They examine their card, but must keep it a secret from the other players, including their teammates. If they like, the clue givers can attach one of these included plastic standees to the bottom of their number card and then position it where they can see it, but the other players can't. The number showing on the clue giver's card tells them which of the words on this list they'll need to get their teammates to guess. If we pretend I'm the clue giver for my team, this tells me that I need to get my team to guess dangerous, patient, and giant. Each clue giver now picks up their stack of art cards and on the count of three, they both begin to give clues to their team. To do this, they imagine that each of their team's circles represent one of the three clues they're trying to get their team to guess. Now, of course, they would normally keep their number card a secret, but I have it revealed here so you can follow along more easily. It doesn't matter which of the words they assign to each of the colors, they just need to make sure that they remember which is which in their own mind. For example, maybe I'll imagine that blue represents giant, yellow I'll assign to dangerous, and pink I'll have represent patient. I now quickly search through the art cards I have, looking at either side in search of images that I think will help give clues about my words. When I find one, I place it into one of the zones of the Venn circles. Where you place it will tell the rest of your team how the card relates to your words. When placed in any of the three single layer outer zones of blue, yellow, and pink, you're saying that something in the art relates to exactly one of the team's words. For example, since I'm imagining that blue represents giant, I might place this card here because it shows a giant butterfly. On the other hand, if you place a clue into any one of these three inner double layer zones, then you are saying your clue relates to the pair of words that overlap in that area. We know I'm imagining that blue represents giant, and if yellow represents dangerous, maybe I'd set this art clue here because it shows a giant foot about to step on some very dangerous exposed wires. So this is blending both giant and dangerous together in the same picture. Finally, there's the center zone in the very middle where all three layers overlap. When you place a clue here, you're saying something in the art of that card relates to all three of the words. 
Once a clue has been placed in a zone, no one can move it, and only one clue can be put in each zone. However, you can keep placing as many clues as you like as quickly as you like. And if you happen to find a better clue than one that's already in a zone, leave the old clue there, but completely cover it with the new clue, and just know players cannot look at any of the cards that have been covered up. Also keep in mind there are no turns. Both teams are going at the same time with clue givers trying to give the best clues as quickly as possible to their teammates. And as soon as a clue giver has put their first clue on their Venn circles, their team can discuss out loud which words by the scoreboard they think are the ones on the clue giver's number card. Now, the clue giver can listen to the discussion, but should not give any guidance, corrections, or comments. All they can do is continue to look through their art cards and add new clues as they wish to. Now, of course, there could be other ways that they could give clues to their team, perhaps through facial expressions or grunts, but clues are only meant to be coming from the cards, not your creative performance. So as the clue giver, do your best not to give any extra signals. And for the guessers on their team, they should not be trying to look for other signals. However, if you're having trouble finding good clues to give as the clue giver, you have an option. At any time, a clue giver can swap their current stack of art cards with the center stack, giving them new options to pick from. That said, any time after a clue giver has placed at least three clues, and once their team believes they know their clue giver's three words, they can call out Ven, and then both clue givers must immediately stop placing cards. The team that called out Ven must now name the three words that they believe their clue giver was trying to get them to guess. And they don't need to indicate which area of the diagram represents each word, they just need to try to name the three words in any order. After the clue giver reveals their number card, and then the team earns one point for each word they got correct, and a bonus point if they got all three words correct. They show this by moving their marker on the scoreboard here. So if we assume that this team got all three of their words correct, they would get three points plus one more as a bonus. Then the other team must do their best to guess their three words, and then their number card is revealed, and they'll also score one point for each word they got right, but they don't get a bonus point even if they got all three of their words correct. Only the team that guesses first can earn the bonus. With the scores recorded, that now ends the round, and the word cards are discarded and replaced with brand new ones. And remember, these word cards are double-sided, and you can flip them to either side. All the art cards should now be collected together and shuffled and split into thirds again. One pile for each of the teams, and then one pile goes to the center of the table as before. Then each team chooses new clue givers who will remove the old number card, draw a new one, and then start the next round. Rounds will continue like this until either team ends the round with 12 or more points. If a team goes past 12, let's say this team ended up scoring 14, they just make a note of their actual final score and now the team with the most points wins. If there's a tie, the team that scored the most points in the final round wins. If there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. And that's how you play the competitive mode. Now let's learn about the cooperative mode. Here, there will be only one team where all of the players will be working together. The setup is very similar, but you only need one set of Venn circles, one scoring marker, and exactly five of the number cards drawn randomly and set in a stack. The rest you can just return to the box. To prepare for the first round, you again deal out four word cards beside the scoreboard, and also keep all of the art cards in a single deck. You'll need a two minute timer for this mode as well, so use a stopwatch, the timer on a mobile device, or whatever you have handy. And when you're ready, pick a clue giver to draw the top number card. They'll examine it, and again, keep it secret from the other players because this will show the three words they're trying to get their team to guess for this round. When they're ready, they then start the two minute timer and begin giving clues just as described during the competitive game. Any time after at least three art cards have been placed on the Venn circles, the other players can call out Venn to stop the game and make their guesses. Or, if the timer runs out, they must stop at that point and make their guesses. Either way, the clue giver now reveals their card and the players score one point for each correct guess. But in this mode of play, there's no bonus point given for guessing all three correctly. 
to start a new round, replace the word cards, take back all of the art cards, and assign a new clue giver who will draw the next number card. The game will continue until either the players score 12 points, winning them the game, or once there's no more number cards left to draw from the deck. Remember, in the cooperative mode, you start with only five. So you only have five rounds to win. If you haven't by then, the players all lose. The game also comes with variant rules that you can include in your competitive or cooperative modes as listed here in the rulebook, but these I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Ven. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.